Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Mount Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today in part four of our continuing series about mastitis pathogens, we're going to be discussing managing mastitis caused by environmental streptococci. Let's start with an overview about this group of organisms that we put together into this category that we call environmental streptococci. This category of environmental streptococci includes several species of streptococci, and it also includes several related organisms which are commonly associated with bovine mastitis. We call these organisms environmental streptococci to distinguish them from the mastitis caused by Streptococcus agalactia. That's a very important um, distinction because Streptococcus agalactia is an obligate udder pathogen that lives only in the udder of cows and is always spread in a contagious manner. Whereas this group of environmental Streptococci are um, organisms that are ubiquitous in the, udder of, or in the environment of the cow, the surroundings of the cow, and the dominant uh, transmission mode is from the environment. We consider these organisms to be um, uh, major mastitis pathogens, and we, we would call them a major mastitis pathogen because they typically result in a high somatic cell count, persistent infections, and they often develop into infections that result in many bacteria being shed in the milk that comes from an infected quarter. Environmental streptococci are an important group of mastitis pathogens because they're often associated with a fairly high incidence of the mastitis infections that we detect. In most studies in North America and Europe, environmental streptococci are found to cause about 20 to 25 percent of mastitis cases that result in clinical signs. However, in some other regions like New Zealand, they cause an even higher percentage um, where maybe 40 or 50 percent of the clinical cases may be caused by environmental streps. When we look at um, the association of environmental streptococci with subclinical mastitis infections, they also cause a fairly high prevalence of this presentation and they're often recovered from about 5 to 15 percent of milk samples that are obtained from cows that have high somatic cell counts. Just like other um, pathogens that, that cause mastitis in dairy cows, we cannot diagnose that the infection is caused by the environmental streptococci just by looking at the appearance of the case. In order to arrive at a diagnosis that the mastitis is caused by an infection with these environmental streptococci, the organisms must be grown in the laboratory from milk samples that are taken from quarters that are suspected to be infected. In the laboratory, the diagnosis is relatively easy. The organism grows on typical media that's used in general mastitis laboratories. Uh, when, you, when the organism is gram-stained, it's a gram-positive cocci. And um, the initial differentiation of these gram-positive cocci uh, for, uh, of streptococci from staphylococci is based on a very simple test called um, a catalase test and staphylococci are catalase positive and streptococci are catalase negative. Now there's several other organisms such as enterococci which will appear the same in the laboratory and um, in order to differentiate enterococci or lactococci or others uh, much more sophisticated laboratory tests are required and you need to request these from a diagnostic laboratory if you're dealing with um, uh, apparent environmental streps and aren't behaving in a fashion that you'd expect. Another important thing that's done in um, diagnostic laboratories is the differentiation of environmental streptococci from Streptococcus agalactia. Again, that's a relatively straightforward test. It's a type of laboratory test called the CAMP test. Very simple to do. Another uh, important laboratory characteristic that can be used to uh, identify environmental streps is an Eschlin reaction. Some environmental streps and some of these strep-like organisms when they're grown on specific media darken the media and that's a real characteristic reaction to these streps. Now all of those tests can be done in a um, uh, well-qualified microbiological laboratory but uh, environmental streps can also be diagnosed using on-farm culture labs because they will grow with a characteristic appearance on selective medias. So the diagnosis of environmental streps is important 
in order to know uh, uh, how to treat them and to uh, and also how to control them and uh, it's not a very complicated diagnosis to arrive at. Now environmental strep infections occur in exactly the same way as most other bacterial infections of the udder occur. The uh, mammary gland becomes infected when the exposure at the teat end exceeds the ability of the immune defenses to resist that infection. Once the infection with these environmental streptia occur, the um, bacteria can cause both clinical and subclinical infections. About uh, uh, one third of subclinical infections that are caused by environmental strep will become chronic and persist for long periods with increased somatic cell counts. In about half of cows that develop these subclinical infections caused by environmental streps will result in uh, clinical symptoms of the disease, abnormal milk. The presentation of these clinical symptoms is a variety. About maybe half of them will be mild with only mildly abnormal milk as a, the sole symptom. About maybe 30-35% of them you may have an additional symptom such as a slightly swollen quarter. In about 20% of the cases that are caused by these environmental streptococci may actually result in systemic signs which can't be distinguished from other types of bacteria that cause systemic signs such as coliform infections. Environmental streptococci come by their name for good reason because these organisms are ubiquitous in the environment of cows. There's many sources that the cow's environment can become infected. They're shed in the feces of cows. Many of the bedding sources that are used for cows, such as straw, are well known to support growth. These organisms grow very well in cool temperatures, which, are, which many dairy cattle live in because they're ideal for dairy cattle. And um, uh, additionally, uh, environmental streptococci are well known to cause mastitis in some pasture-based systems. So there's multiple sources uh, of potential exposure in the environment of the cows and we have to focus our preventive programs on reducing the probability that the teats will become in contact with these multiple sources. Another important uh, time period that is of extremely high risk in the development of environmental streptococcal infections is the dry period of the cow. In fact, some studies have shown that up to 50% of intramammary infections caused by these environmental streps may be acquired during the dry period. These infections can develop during the dry period but persist um, until the cow calves again and you may not see initial symptoms even immediately after the cow calves, but what you can see later on in that lactation is the occurrence of high cell counts, a symptom of subclinical mastitis, and some clinical symptoms in cows in the subsequent lactation. One good clue to look for uh, uh, in your herds is cows that develop these subclinical infections during the dry period usually will have an increased somatic cell count during the first month of lactation which you can pick up if you're doing your monthly somatic cell count testing. The most important thing in dealing with environmental streptococci as a mastitis pathogen is to prevent that initial infection. So our focus should be on reducing exposure of the teats to contaminated environments. We need to focus on improving hygiene and the environment in the dry and the periparturient periods. We need to identify that these dry cows, these early fresh cows, their immune defenses are lower, high producing cows, cows in negative energy balance. These cows don't have the same ability to respond to challenge and we have to therefore look at reducing exposure. We also have to recognize that these organisms are very smart. They not only can cause environmental mastitis, when the teats come in contact with moisture, mud, and manure, once that subclinical infection develops, some of these organisms can be transmitted in a contagious fashion. That means that these cows with subclinical infections may be um, uh, producing milk that has high bacterial counts in it. That bacteria, if it comes in contact with the teats of a healthy cow, can be transmitted in a contagious format. Now sometimes, in spite of our best efforts, some cows do develop 
uh, subclinical or clinical mastitis infections caused by these environmental streps. Now when a cow has clinical symptoms caused by environmental streptococci, it's very important that those cows receive appropriate antibiotic treatment. Uh, we recommend the use of an intramammary product with a proven gram-positive spectrum. We also, um, there's some data that I'm aware of that demonstrates that some environmental streptococcal mastitis cases will respond better with a moderately longer duration of therapy. And that would be a therapy maybe of up to five days. Now if clinical cases are not treated, in many instances the symptoms of the clinical case will resolve, in other words the mouth will go back to a normal appearance, but don't be fooled that that's a cure. In many instances that case may have simply reverted to a subclinical state. And one of the things we've seen over the years is that farms that elect to not treat any clinical mastitis with antibiotic therapy often develop long-term problems with chronic strep-infected cows, and you'll see a gradual increase in the bulk tank cell count in these herds, a gradual increase in the prevalence of subclinical infections in the herd, and ultimately then uh, lower milk production and more cases of clinical mastitis. Now, we strongly recommend the appropriate treatment of cows with clinical symptoms caused by these environmental streptococci. But conversely, treatment of subclinical infections is probably not profitable for most farms. There's a very good economic model that was done by Dutch researchers that showed that the economic benefit of treating these subclinical environmental strep infections was only present if um, the infections were chronic and they were identified in early lactation. In that instance, it's probably profitable to treat them. Secondly, the only other time when treatment of these subclinical infections was profitable was if you had a herd that had failed to control contagious transmission. So in that instance, it was also profitable to treat these subclinical infections. However, if you've got a bunch of subclinical infections, rather than just continuously treating them, the focus should be on preventing that initial infection because the best economic outcomes in that model were based on prevention of the initial infection. So environmental streptococci are an important cause of both clinical and subclinical mastitis on many dairy farms. We really need to focus on prevention of the initial infection and we have to have special emphasis on preventing exposure during the dry period. We also want to have special emphasis on identifying high-risk cows and making sure that we don't expose them to an environment where these pathogens are found. Finally, part of the control of environmental streptococcal infections is to simply make sure we have a good strategy for using antimicrobial treatments when clinical symptoms occur.